Hello, I'm going to talk to you today about the labour market. The world of work is continually changing and it's really useful to know about key trends in local industries. So I'm here today with a local recruitment expert, James Taylor, who's going to talk about some of the key trends that he is seeing and some top employability tips later on in this video. So what is the labour market? Labour market information can tell you which industries are recruiting and where they are located, the number of people in certain types of jobs, what jobs and skills employers are looking for, and growing or declining job areas and general employment trends. No matter what is happening in the economy, there will always be some businesses or some sectors that book the general trend. The latest report on jobs, produced monthly by the Recruitment and Employment Confederation, shows IT, computing, engineering, construction, accounting and finance, and nursing and medical jobs are currently growing. So, if you are starting to career plan, it is helpful to be more aware of the broad range of different job roles across organisations and sectors of work and any work trends. For example, you'll be aware of the huge Walker's Crisp factory here in Leicester, the largest crisp factory in the world. And alongside those roles in production, they have roles in engineering, research, HR, marketing. So you can see that there can be lots of potential different roles across companies. But there are also lots of different sectors of work. Work sectors are those where the employers tend to do similar things. For example, employers who make things work in manufacturing. Locally, there are lots of great sectors to work in, like health and social care, low carbon, space, creative and digital, manufacturing, business, finance and professional services, construction, logistics, education, engineering. So these are just some of the great local sectors available, but there are others. So let's look at some of the things that affect the world of work. COVID-19 affected both the local and global world of work and organisations had to change fast to adapt in changing circumstances. For example, lots of companies had to temporarily close or adapt to online services. There has been an ongoing trend for organisations to adapt to use digital services and I see lots of IT vacancies every single day. Within the Leicestershire region, we see lots of blue chips and lots of SMEs all looking to recruit IT positions into their teams to help them to achieve that level of digital transformation that the market requires. Right now, Next um, in Enderby have got 80 live IT vacancies. And that's anything from uh, front-end web developers to cloud engineers, to software engineers. There are so many different types of job that exist within the IT department. It isn't just for techie people, it's also for creatives, people that are visionary, people that want to make a difference to an organisation. Businesses exist to solve problems. So for example, although gyms had to close, they changed to offer online classes. Many cafes and restaurants also had to close for eating customers, so they started to offer takeaways. Sadly though, some sectors have been hit very hard, like travel, tourism and the events industry. We still do not know the long-term impact of COVID. We do know that there will be more competition for jobs. So we're going to look at job hunting and employability tips later in this video. So, what else affects the labour market? Well, new technology. You may be aware that artificial intelligence and automation is increasing across organisations. Taking care of the environment is also key. There are a lot of government directives, so all organisations have to look at the way they can reduce waste and be more environmentally friendly. 
There's also a changing workforce with more flexible working and more short-term and long-term project work rather than full-time permanent jobs. So that's an evolving new trend that we are seeing. So when thinking about your career ideas, it is so useful to consider what is happening in the labour market. Assess trends around you, but also have a backup idea. Anna mentioned the growing use of technology across sectors, which means a high demand for the following hard skill sets. Number one, coding and programming. Number two, big data and all things data. Number three, digital marketing. Number four, cyber security. Number five, artificial intelligence. Six, data science skills. Seven, skills to design and develop augmented and virtual reality applications. And number eight, skills in cloud computing. And outside of the world of technology, we've got an aging population here in the UK, meaning that there are more opportunities arising than ever before in health and social care. This sector is an incredibly broad sector. It's much wider than just doctors and nurses. There are over 350 different types of job role, so it's well worth you researching. As Anna mentioned, the growing emphasis on sustainability and greener technology should mean new roles linked to electric vehicles, to green building techniques, to green food packaging, and to greener energy and manufacturing. In a COVID world, we also saw the need for key workers to keep the country going. People working in the public sector, the police, digital services, food retail, health and social care, drivers, logistics, and utilities like energy, IT, and water engineers. These are just some of the areas to think about, along with some of the local sectors like logistics and like aerospace and space that the Leicestershire area has a strength in. Currently, there are just over 490,000 jobs in the Leicester and Leicestershire area and over 43,000 registered businesses, including large businesses with a base here, such as IBM, Amazon, Hastings Direct, Next, 3M, Caterpillar, Triumph, Dunelm, Santander and Samworth Brothers, but also a lot of great public sector organisations like the NHS, Police, Job Centre, Education and local authorities who also employ a lot of people and have a broad range of roles. But you must remember most local employers are micro, so they employ under 10 staff, small, so they employ 10 to 49 staff, or medium, which is those that employ 50 to 249 staff. And these are the ones that have the most career opportunities. And these are employers that you may not even know about. There is a massive world that exists outside of the world of big corporate. And that's the world of SME. And SME is about small and medium sized enterprises. And I'm a massive fan about working for SMEs. You are closer to the action. As a first role straight from school or straight from university, if you are prepared to roll up your sleeves, to work hard, you've got an opportunity to make a real difference in the way that you don't with a big corporate. Within the world of an SME, you will get to meet the managing director or the chief exec. You will get to know his or her name. You will meet them at the water cooler or the coffee machine. You will get the chance to make a real name for yourself. You are so close to the leadership team that if you do a good job, you will make a difference, you will get recognised and you are much more likely to be promoted quicker. You will get a much, much broader breadth of experience if you manage to secure a role within a small to medium sized organisation. So that's a quick overview of the labour market. I finished university with a 2-2 degree in accountancy. 
I realised really quickly that I didn't want to be an accountant, probably within the first 15 minutes of my three years at Newcastle. When I first walked through McEldowie's doors, it was for them to help me to find a job. Three hours later, I'd been spoken to about becoming a trainee recruitment consultant. I really liked the sound of it. It sounded right up my street. I got turned down. I was devastated. I picked the phone back up to the managing director. I offered to work for free. That was back in 1997. Today in 2020, I am the chief exec of McEldowie, a business that has 60 staff, that works predominantly recruiting highly talented people into the SME sector. I've got five top tips for job seekers. Number one has to be, don't panic. No matter how tough the situation seems, do not panic. With that in mind, number two is don't spray and pray. Do not just keep hitting send on a job application form to hundreds of employers. You will have very little success if you work that way. Number three is write down your passionate list. What is it that gets you excited? What are you most passionate about? What are your favourite lessons? Make a list of those things. Then number four, once you've got that list, have a look at all of the major job boards and see which of the jobs reconcile and tie in to your passionate list. Once you've done that, point five is tailor your applications. Use the language that it says in the job advert or in the job spec and use the same language on your CV and on your covering letter and you will experience a much, much better ratio of CV sent to first interview secured. So be different. Stand out from the crowd. Two covering letters are better than one. These days, hardly anybody receives a handwritten envelope anymore. Obviously, you're going to write a covering letter online, on email, to accompany your CV. But do the same thing in paper format. Go old school. If all else fails, offer to work for free for two weeks. Work experience is a brilliant thing to get onto your CV anyway. And if you can prove yourself within that first two weeks, rest assured, an organisation is not going to let you go. Therefore, by working for free for a couple of weeks, you are very, very likely to secure yourself paid work for the foreseeable future. Your first job cannot be all about the money. It's about getting experience and getting into an organisation that will reward you for a job well done. The advice that I would give to you guys looking to start out in the world of work is don't panic. Where you can, hand deliver a written envelope application. Offer to work for free for two weeks. Show a desire for self-improvement. Work ethic is critical. Don't be afraid of failure, because failure sometimes can be good. The CV is a sales document, and there are only three types of question that you really need to know about at interview. The first one is what have you done so far? The second one is what is it that you want to do next? And the third one is what are you like as a person? Every single interviewer will ask you, what do you know about us? And have you got any further questions? Those are the two areas where you can make a massive difference to your overall performance at interview. You also need to get a LinkedIn account if you don't have one already. 
and learn how to use it. On many, many occasions, guys, it's not the best candidate that gets the job, it's the keenest, it's the most passionate candidate that gets the job. So my final piece of advice to you is if all else fails, resort to passion. One last thing, another option and a growing option for young people is to be an entrepreneur and to run your own business. If you can spot a gap in the market and have a strong business plan, tenacity and talent, it's a great start. Good luck, stay proactive and stay curious.